ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम बैक टू दी सेशन ऑन दी चैप्टर फाइव ऑफ द फर्स्ट कैंटो वी आर सो फार सीन द फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी टू वर्सेस ऑफ दिस चैप्टर सो टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू इन द ट्वेंटी थर्ड वर्स बिफोर वी प्रोसीड विद द ट्वेंटी थर्ड वर्स आई हैव अ क्विक क्वेश्चन सो कैन समवन in brief say what has happened so far in the fifth chapter what is the what how does how did it begin and what was the advice narada has given so far how does the chapter begin so i won of narada hey one by one narada yeah narada right almost at the end of the fourth chapter and the fifth chapter what happened what was the discussion yes he was not satisfied yes vasudev was despondent he was not happy and um, so narada narada triggered uh vyasa to um, what is going on with you what is happening it looks like you have in spite of having compiled all the puranas and itihasas and all the other things still you looks like you are not happy where is the problem so that was the that, that's when the whole discussion began and then what does what happened what narada says after vyasa what was the another amazing thing that we saw what was vyasa's response to narada's identification of his despondency narada hmm please tell me why uh, what is yeah he, so yeah that's the point yeah he said that please yes i am i am in, i am in a difficulty i am not able to figure out myself so um, i need help so what is the one thing that we important thing that we learn from that You remember we were discussing some points. No, yeah, yeah. We want to ask some questions. Sorry. If anyone want to ask some question, first we glorify. Then. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. there. That is. Even that is there. Even the Vyas Deva needs. Yeah, that's the point. Is that yeah, that's the point. Even a person of the caliber of Vyasadev, who is so knowledgeable, who knows everything. So in this material world, we need the shelter of a pure soul. only by the shelter of the pure soul we can get all our doubts clarified and then we can take to the path of uh, bhakti or the path of spiritual life whatever so we need the shelter of guru so that we learned so uh, narada muni went on um, establishing the um, the power of uh, pure devotional service the glory of the lord uh, the glory of establishing krishna's amazing activities is uh, is name form Glory. He, he pointed out, pointed out that that is not sufficiently um, explained. That that's the cause of your despondency, and um, so that's what we have seen so far. And he further um, explains that you please start to. Uh, he gives instructions. You please start writing uh, about the glories of the Lord. And he gave instructions also. Three in three verses we saw the instructions that he has given that. you explicitly glorify the lord starting with explaining about his energies how he is the huh? how he is the cause of the material world how he is simultaneously one and different all those things we saw and um, and, and in the 22nd verse we also came to a understanding that prabhupada was, was explaining that uh, it is the, it is very important for everyone whatever may be his talents whatever may be his abilities whatever may be his proficiency all those things should be Don't tell in Krishna's service. Everything should be engaged in the Lord's service. So that's where we stop, right? Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mathe Bhakti Vikas Swam Niti Namine. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mathe Bhakti Vedanta Swam Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashchatya Deshatarine. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जस्ट कंपाइल सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस दैट दैट अपीयर्स इन इन द चैप्टर्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट 
uh, two chapters, we saw six questions in the first chapter, right? And then following, you can see as the as the chapter unfolds, you can see time again and again. You can see questions being raised by um, uh, by the Saunaka Rishis, uh, Saunaka Rishis, and then they ask Sutta Goswami some questions, and then further more questions. Uh, come up in the upcoming chapters and then those questions are answered. So what I have done is I have picked up those questions and then I have just put it in a document. I will share it with you afterwards. So that nothing new, whatever questions that is that is there, I'm just I'm just add, we have just added it as seventh question, eighth question, ninth question and how the answers are um, given in the Bhagavatam. How the how the how the answers are dealt with. It's just an observation, it's just an extra uh, observation that we can see there are Continuous flow of questions and answers in the Bhagavatam, we will see that. So, I, I just want to share that with you. Um, so, now from the upcoming verse, Narada Muni is going to show himself as an example. He is going to explain that, hey, you want to know further, let me tell about my own life, what happened to me. Um, I came in contact with pure devotees, the Bhakti Vedantas. I came in contact with them. And by the association of their, by their divine association, my life was completely transformed. And, uh, and you are seeing me today like this, it is all because of their association. That's what is going to be the rest of the chapter. Um, so, Narada Muni in his previous life as Shudra engaged in personal service of the Bhakti Vedantas, heard from them about the Lord's glories and the confidential service. This is what happened. This is what the next upcoming verses are going to explain. And also from, uh, he's also, uh, through his personal life, he's establishing that there is nothing more glorious in, in, the, in all the three planetary systems than getting the mercy of the pure devotees. The mercy of the pure devotees is the cause of bhakti. Huh? Bhakti sanjayate, bhaktiya uh, sanjayate, bhakti. So that's the point. So only by the association of devotees, that is the... Um, root cause of devotional service. So, that we will be uh, seeing in the upcoming verses. Okay. Verse 23. O Muni, in my past life, in the last millennium, I was born as the son of a certain maidservant engaged in the service of Brahmanas who were following the principles of Vedanta. When they were living together during the four months of the rainy season, I was engaged in their personal service. So, this is the point. He, he was fortunate enough to take association of the pure devotees. Uh, during the Chaturmasya time period, so he was able to associate with them. And Prabhupada points out that actually the devotional service begins with the service to the bona fide servants of the Lord. That's where the devotional service begins. And if you remember in the second chapter of the uh, of the first canto of Bhagavatam, you will see the whole series how the consciousness is lifted, how the consciousness is elevated by it all begins with hearing from the serving and hearing from the bona fide devotees of the Lord. Uh, Shushusho Shraddha Dharasya Vasudeva Kataruti Sayan Mahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nishayana. So this Shushusho Shraddha Dharasya, with little, even with little faith, you start serving the devotee. What happens? You acquire the qualities of the pure devotee and you develop taste for hearing about Harikata. This is the secret. <laughs> How to develop taste for um, hearing about Harikata is we have to engage in the service of. Uh, those Mahat, those great personalities, we have to engage in their service. That's what Prabhupada is pointing out in the purport. Um, and he says, by that association, one will be able to make uh, tremendous progress and uh, will be able to um, make this entire world into a spiritual abode. Prabhupada says, the expert spiritual master knows the art of utilizing everything to glorify the Lord. And therefore, under his guidance, the whole world can be turned into the spiritual abode by the divine grace of the Lord's servant. <laughs> his divine grace, he, he did it. Huh? Narada Muni is the example here. Following the parampara of Narada Muni, it was Srila Prabhupada. Huh? He built a house where the whole world can live. Huh? That house was the spiritual abode. Okay. So then Narada Muni shares, although they were impartial by nature, they, those followers of the Vedanta blessed me with their costless mercy. As far as I was concerned, I was self-controlled and had no attachment for sports, even though I was a boy. In addition, I was not naughty, 
and I did not speak more than required. Now, please have a careful look at this. Narada Muni is speaking about his qualities and um, he also explains here that uh, he actually got the causeless mercy of the his Bhakti Vedantas. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, if you see in, this, uh, in, the, in the verse, Chakru Kripam Yadhyapi Tulya Darshanaha. Huh? Um, tulya Darshanaha. They are impartial by nature. The great Bhakti Vedanta is impartial by nature and their mercy is causeless. So now we can see on the other hand uh, the qualities of Narada Muni also. He was self controlled, he had no attachment for sports, he was fully convinced to take up spiritual life, he was not naughty, uh, no trouble in the class <laughs> when the teacher wants to teach something. So, these all these great qualities you saw with Narada. At the same time, uh, we can see that because of these qualities where the Bhakti Vedantas are attracted, no, the Bhakti Vedantas or the, the pure devotees of the Lord, they are just. They just, you know, uh, for anyone and everyone, they just distribute the mercy. They don't see. Well, when somebody becomes um, more favorable, maybe he may get more mercy. <laughs> That's the point. So, the point that we, we have to remember here is Bhakti is costless. Bhakti does not have a cause. Because he is born in such and such a family, because of his pious uh, attitude, he now he is able to practice Bhakti. No, doesn't matter. Whatever may be one's background, one's situation. Bhakti is completely cosmos. It just overflows from the uh, from the heart of a devotee. It's just the mercy overflows. So that 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 point we have to remember. And in fact, Narada Muni, because of their association, he developed all these qualities and is all these wonderful qualities that he was exhibiting. Um, what are those wonderful qualities? So he was not playful. He was he was self controlled. He was not naughty. All these qualities we could see in him, and this is. A result of association with, with this Bhakti Vedantas. And these qualities again further inspired the Bhakti Vedantas to give him more association, give him more uh, knowledge, give him more uh, guidance. This is the point. So, when we come in the association of pure devotees, if we humbly render service to them, by their mercy, we develop saintly qualities. And by our further qualities, the, 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 the pure devotees are inspired to uh, give us um, more knowledge, give us give us more mercy. That's the whole point. Okay. Hmm. Okay. See here, Prabhupada in this part, but he's making a point. The Bhakti Vedans, Vedantas see that the people in general are wasting time in false sensuous things. Their business is to get the ignorant mass of people to re-establish their lost relationship with the personality of Godhead. By such endeavor, even the most forgetful soul is roosted up to the sense of spiritual life. And thus being initiated by the Bhakti Vedantas, the people in general gradually progress on the path of transcendental realization. The more we read the purport, you know, we are able to imagine, think about the Bhakti Vedantas who gave mercy to Narada Muni. And also we can, we have, we, 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 we immediately relate to Srila Prabhupada. This is what he did. He went to the West. Where did he come? With which place? There was such a miserable place. You know, the Bowery, people are hippies, drunkards, they are passing water on the streets. These, these kind of people Srila Prabhupada dealt. Huh? Um, so that is Prabhupada's special mercy that we could see. That he just, he didn't discriminate. Huh? He's a learned, he's not learned, he's, he's from a high, ba big background, he's from a small background. He just spoke, he just gave the holy name, he just spoke the true message of Krishna consciousness. <coughs> Uh, I just want uh, a couple of interesting conversations. Uh, one devotee was checking with Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, why, 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 why has it taken so long for a pure devotee to come to the West? Has the West been so sinful that no pure devotee has come before your divine grace? Don't be sorry, Srila Prabhupada. Don't be sorry. At that time you were so sinful that you could not receive a pure devotee. This is one instance Prabhupada said. In another instance Prabhupada gave another interesting answer. He said, one girl was asking Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, would you please explain why Krishna consciousness hadn't come to the West until now? Why it hasn't come earlier? Srila Prabhupada, because you are not born. <laughs> After your birth, we have come here to take you back home, back to God. Now take the opportunity, come with us. We were waiting for your birth. So Prabhupada was such an expert and uh, he just lavishly distributed the mercy of the Lord. You know, people just saw Prabhupada and they were 
completely inspired. There was one devotee in his memories he is sharing that um, all the devotees came to the temple, Prabhupada was about to give a class and somehow or other he got an opportunity to hold an umbrella. Okay? So he was he was a hippie, just for one week he started visiting the temple. So he was holding the umbrella for Prabhupada and Prabhupada is speaking and middle uh, in the middle of a class Srila Prabhupada just said you have to surrender. And he, Prabhupada just casually turned his face and then that one line it hit me like hit him like anything. You have to surrender. But that's all. He just he surrendered and uh, he dedicated his life further. You know, it's not it's just uh, the, the, just the glance and then the touch. Prabhupada's glance was very powerful. His uh, his touch was powerful. Whatever he did was he had a pure devotee has such a powerful impact on any conditioned soul. Simultaneously, what they did after that, they engaged in service. They developed taste and they started hearing. They started reading Prabhupada's books. They started following instructions of Prabhupada. And then you can see transformation happening in the, in, the, in the lives of the devotees. This is what is the whole explanation that we see here. Okay, so Prabhupada in this purport, he further ex ex explains that, that um, even, when, even before the child is born, uh, the child uh, is um, trained in the path of Krishna consciousness by Garbhadana Samskara. Prabhupada is explaining about that. Mm. Okay. So, and then Narada Muni, he further explains how, what is the power of the mercy of the remnants of the, of pure devotees. When the pure devotees have honored prasadam and then they leave some remnants and well, the power of it is unimaginable. So, uh, one makes tremendous progress. The Bhakti Vedantas, as above mentioned, were pure devotees and the boy became infected with their qualities of purity by their association and by eating once the remnants of the footstuff taken by them. Huh? If you associate with intoxicants, you become intoxicated. <laughs> if you associate with those who are intoxicated with the love of Krishna, we become also intoxicated with that. That intoxication affects us. Okay. So here one, <laughs> one point to note. Uh, you carefully note this. Such remnants may be taken even without permission of the pure devotees. <laughs> Yeah, that's, you know, there is, uh, it's not an offense, of course, uh, I just relate one incident, there was, uh, some devotees were too much enthusiastic in one temple, there was a plate that was made for one, one sannyasi, you know, he went for a preaching program, it was kept safe, and even before the sannyasi came, they, they had the plate, thinking that it was Mahaprasadam, and when we were about to serve that, that was not available, <laughs> it, should, it should not be like that, anyway, the point is that we should, um, we should hanker for the remnants of um, the uh, Uchishta Lepan, as, as, as that is explained here. So the remnants of the advanced devotees, uh, Prasadam, we should be ready to take the run. That we will make tremendous progress by that because it is surcharged with pure devotion. So that's the main point here. Okay, after the, so what happens by the association of the pure devotee, while, while you honor the, the remnants that is uh, given by them, what is the net result of it? Here, Prabhupada says, after the elimination of all sins or obstacles on the path of devotional service, one can become attracted, one can have steadiness, one can have perfect taste, one can have transcendental emotions, and at last one can be situated on the plan of, on the plane of loving service of the Lord. All these stages developed by the association of pure devotees, and that is the purpose of this stanza. So, from Komal Shraddha, from there to the stage of Prema, it all happens by the association of pure devotees. Shuddha Bhakata Charana Renu Bhajana Anukur. So, where is the, uh, the, uh, the pure devotion, where it is residing, the lotus feet of the pure devotee? Hmm? Bhakata Seva Paramasiddhi Prema Latikaramu. So that is the root. That's the root from where you get Prema. Okay. Verse 26. O Vyasadeva, in that association and by the mercy of those great Vedantas, I could hear them describe the attra attractive activities of Lord Krishna. And thus, as I listened attentively, my taste for hearing of the personality of God had increased at every step. So the, to the degree we get, we become purified, to that degree, our attraction to hear this transcendental message increases. Huh? So that's what Narada Muni is, is uh, explaining here. Prabhupada uh, is very specific here. He is saying, 
Instead of wasting time, one can get spiritual success by turning his attention to the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. By hearing the narration of the pastimes of the Lord, one contacts directly the personality of Godhead. And as explained before, when one hears about the personality of Godhead, all accumulated sins of the mundane creature are cleared from within. You remember, when our advanced devotee comes, what we try to do? What one main thing we try to do? Huh? Yeah, we hear. Apart from that, anything else you can think of? Huh? Serve them. Yes, we hear from them, we serve them. Then what else we try to do? We ask questions. Submissively ask questions then. Huh? Yes, taking the remnants then. One other important thing we do for the pure devotee. One important thing we do. Ask for his mercy. Okay, that's also very nice. Ask for his mercy. And another thing, we these are all from our side. Okay, from our side. And what else we do? Being followers of Srila Prabhupada, we try to arrange public programs. We try to arrange so big programs. We try to invite so many people to come in and meet such devotees. Because just by their glance, just by giving oral reception to them, just by hearing from them, discussing with them, there is a big transformation that happens in the lives of the people. Because to the degree they are, those advanced devotees are pure, to that degree they will be distributing the mercy. So that's why when, whenever our uh, proper disciples are here, we try to arrange programs, we try to gather as many new people as possible. We are getting mercy, huh? we are just sharing this mercy to others. So this is the whole point. Hmm? So we should not forget this. So this is why when, when, whenever any advanced devotee is here, we try, to, uh, we try to arrange programs in such a way that people can come and take association. Because the purity hits, hits the people. Hmm? So this is the point. So that's what Prabhupada is saying that instead of wasting time, one can get spiritual success by turning his attention towards transcendental pastimes, hearing it from a pure devotee. Hmm? So many people, you can see, Srila Prabhupada, wherever he went, he created a revolution. He, they were just stunned by his speech. They were just stunned by just looking at him. Some people just cried on the spot. That these are all not exaggeration. Really, you can see when we hear the memories of many devotees, we can see people, even common people were hit by Prabhupada. And um, they became devotees. So this is the power of our advanced devotees, pure devotees. Hmm? So that's one point we have to remember. One can attain to the highest perfection of life simply by attentive hearing of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord from the right sources, as Sri Narada heard from the pure devotees, Bhakti Vedanta, in his previous life. This process of hearing in the association of devotees is especially recommended in this age of quarrel. Okay, text 27. O oh, great sage, as soon as I got a taste for the personality of Godhead, my attention to hear of the Lord was unflinching. And as my taste developed, I could realize that it was only in my ignorance that I had accepted gross and subtle coverings. For both the Lord and I are transcendental. So when, when one is thoroughly purified, he is able to see that he is not his body, his spirit, soul. He is, and then on top of that, he is able to see that he is able to see that he is eternal servant of the Supreme Lord. Hmm? So he is able to see that he is covered. Hmm? As long as we are in ignorance, we will not be able to see our covering. We will not, we will neither be able to see our gross covering nor be able to see our subtle covering. Hmm? So when we have made pro tremendous progress, we will be able to see that that we are covered. So that's what Narada is, Narada is ex experiencing here. I can see that by the mercy of the Lord, I am able to. Feel free from the gross and subtle bodies. So uh, here, um, uh, Narada Prabhupada the Parpat is uh, highlighting an important point here. He's saying that the gross body should be engaged in acts of rendering service to the Lord, as in bringing water, cleansing the temple, or making obeisances, etc. The path of archana or worshiping the Lord in the temple involves engaging one's gross body in the service of the Lord. Similarly, the subtle mind should be engaged in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, thinking about them, chanting his name, etc. All such activities are transcendental. Such realization of transcendental activities is made possible by many, many years of apprenticeship in the devotional service. That simple attraction of love of the personality of Godhead, as it is, was developed in Narada Muni by hearing is highly effective. So here, stress so much is given on hearing. So there are two things that are uh, if you carefully look at this purport, there are two things are mentioned here. Uh, anything you, you did you observe when you are reading the purport? Huh? Yeah, apprenticeship is the apprenticeship is like you getting trained under someone and then practicing devotional service under training of a bona spiritual master. But you see here, it's, it's being spoken about archana 
and then is being here also is being spoken about um ah that's the point shila prabhupad what is trying to make up, make here is there is two things one is pancharatra vidhi and then bhagavata vidhi both has to be we need both the practice the, the but we give so much stress on uh, shravanam kirtanam and smaranam of the navavida bhakti but we need this worship of the deities we need to because why it, it it immediately creates a very favorable atmosphere it helps our crazy mind to fix ourselves we have mangalarti at 4 o'clock we have to wake up take bath keep yourself clean you have your clean clothes bring nice flowers for the lord make garland worship the deity offer perform abhishek you can't just be spaced out you can't do just do whenever you want whatever you want immediately it puts you on the right track right so this is the point so prabhupada is speaking here that archana and and the uh, yeah, pancharatra and bhagavata that's what is being spoken here okay so then further narada muni he took more association during this chaturmasya and then he was completely purified of the modes of passion and ignorance um and uh, proper in the purport to the uh, 28 he speaks about how the pure devotion starts flowing as the river flows on on till she reaches the sea similarly pure devotion service flows by the association of pure devotees till it reaches the ultimate goal namely transcendental love of god huh? you remember any words in the garden this paime nanya vishaya matir madut matupate sakrit atim udbahata madha gange vaugham udanti Huh? So Kunti Marani, she says, that, let my pure devotion be like this. How the Ganges, Mother Ganga is flowing. So let my devotion also flow like that. Hmm? Upcoming, we will be seeing Kunti's prayers. But you can see very consistent the different devotees' prayers and different points being uh, how proper the sharing from the points. So the flow of devotion service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance. <laughs> these two qualities of nature are thus removed and the living being is liberated being situated on his in his original position did you see what prabhu is writing here the flow of devotional service is so potent that any onlooker also becomes liberated from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance any onlooker what does it mean yes. i mean not passing just seeing he's just seeing you see many times it happens devotees are on the streets doing hari naam Uh, some people first time come to the temple the devotees are great ecstasy uh, doing service they are doing they are, even some people see come and all see the wonderful puja that is being performed when devotees are engaged in service blissfully with purity when they perform just for the pleasure of the lord this attracts the conditioned soul this is the power of bhakti um yeah the uh, the when the incense is also offered many many some of some of them they felt where am i you know i mean why couldn't when the first time is devout is told in, in in europe you know when they first time and they went to the temple they have never seen this fragrance <laughs> the fragrance of the incense some of it's from where you know i have this traditional uh, smell and very nice smell of different flowers of course nowadays a lot of chemical stuffs are there is different uh, situation but there are good fragrance and other things and when they come they see the one devotees with great love doing all the service they are offering incense they are offering uh, flowers and everything is so nicely decorated devotees happily singing he just looks at all these things and can i also join you <laughs> they want to they want to be part of the part of this program so that's the glory of bhakti okay uh okay I was very much attached to those sages I was gentle in behavior and all my sins were eradicated in their service in my heart I had strong faith in them I had subjugated the senses and I was strictly following them with body and mind so this is required no just not that you know you we just uh, I came in the association of devotees everything is very nice wonderful follow okay now you have come taken a step ahead now you follow the instructions given proper makes that point you see proper immediately hits the point he says one should not be misled by a pseudo devotee so two things he says one we have to follow the instructions of pure devotee and also we should be able to um delineate what is proper devotion what is not proper devotion so proper says he must he himself must be plain and gentle to receive the instructions of such a pure devotee ready to accept tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya pranipatena you have one has to be 
humble we ready to accept you know what the your uh, your teacher says or what the what the guru is instructing the disciple your pure devotee is a completely surrendered soul under the personality of god and he knows the personality of god as the supreme proprietor and all others as his servitors and by the association of pure devotees only one can get rid of all sins accumulated by mundane association so proper says and even new of a devotee must faithfully serve the pure devotee and he should be very much obedient and strictly follow the instructions so these are the signs of a devotee who is determined to achieve success even in the existing duration of life so we can attain success we have to be determined to follow the instructions this is the point so shri prabhupa <laughs> Uh, was uh, very practical uh, he used to say you come to me uh, i will mold you uh, i will train you uh, so one devotee uh, one devotee approached prabhupad and then um, he says how will i know what to follow and then he was asking shri prabhupad prabhupad i need to know what what should i follow what should i not follow he says prabhupad says you learn you come to me i will teach you and beat you with shoes and teach you <laughs> come to me why am i here you come i shall beat you with shoes and teach you then you will learn you require some beating with shoes you are a bad student so i will do that come on yes i i keep always my shoes for my bad students <laughs> so the point is uh, proper was not literally beating anybody with the shoes but that's the mercy the guru is ready to take the trouble to instruct the disciples and the disciples we have our responsibility to follow huh? a <laughs> few days back one devotee was checking with another devotee prabhu if you can keep your conscience on my head you know he was he said if you can keep the conscience i my dullness will go away you remember when dhruva was dhruva when the lord kept the conscience on dhruva dhruva was inspired and then he started offering wonderful prayers so then this devotee said no 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 you don't need conscience i will give you something else and you need something else, some other treatment <laughs> he was saying that i will beat you then you will come to senses So anyway, the, I'm just extending the point. The point is that we need mercy of the pure devotee. Mercy comes in the forms of instruction, in the form of chastisement. It's all for you know, we are very raw. Huh? With raw, you know, you cannot offer anything which is raw. You cannot offer to the Lord. So that has to be trimmed, molded. You know, diamond. You know, diamond. What they do? So much is uh, being polished, and they so much of churning goes on. Then the di- diamond becomes. really shining and what so this is what happens when we go and take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master he trains us and then he purifies us and a devotee is proper is making a point here again i remind this he must he himself must be plain and gentle to receive the instructions if we are puffed up knowledge doesn't we don't get the knowledge hmm? that's the point okay as they were leaving those bhakti vedantas who were very kind to poor hearted souls instructed me in the most confidential subject which is instructed by the personality of god and himself so they and prabhupad in the purport he is explaining about what is that confidential knowledge so we when we were reading the bhagavad gita 9th chapter and also in the 10th chapter we are just hearing what is that confidential knowledge huh? anybody anybody remembers what are this confidential knowledge yeah that confidential knowledge is one manav mat bhakto um that's pure devotional service to the lord has to be rendered then what else gukhyam gukhyataram gukhyatamam okay that means just to save time so there is realization of brahman then there is realization of parmatma and then there is realization of bhagavan so realization of bhagavan ultimately that is the that's what that's the most confidential knowledge it's not available not everybody can understand this so lord is saying that i'm going to reveal to you this knowledge so that's what prabhupad is addressing in this purport here uh, i'm sure you would have read this purport uh, so prabhupad exactly speaks about this this is more confidential which is more confidential but when such knowledge is turned into pure devotion service if you say this is more confidential i'll just go a little up okay i'll read the entire one looks like some of you have not read it the expression most confidential is significant here because knowledge of devotional service is far far above knowledge of impersonal brahman jnana means ordinary knowledge or any branch of knowledge okay this knowledge develops up to the knowledge of impersonal brahman about this when it is partially mixed with devotion such knowledge develops to knowledge of paramatma or the all pervading god this is more confidential but when such knowledge is turned into pure devotional service and the confidential part of transcendental knowledge is attained it is called the most confidential knowledge 
the, this most confidential knowledge was imparted by Lord to Brahma, Arjuna, Uddhava, etc. Okay, Prabhupada uh, Narayana further says, By that confidential knowledge, I could understand clearly the influence of the energy of Lord Sri Krishna, the creator, maintainer and annihilator of everything. By knowing that, one can return to him and personally meet him. This is interesting. Yena gachanti tatpadam. Mayanu bhavam avidham. Yena gachanti tatpadam. So this is the whole point. That uh, by, by getting that tra transcendental knowledge, I will be able to... He is saying, I am able to see reality from illusion. I am able to see the how the Lord is a person. How everything is working through his energies. And... Um, by that knowledge, I could I went go I went back home back to Godhead and I could personally meet the Lord. So this is the uh, fruit of uh, pure devotional service. So this confidential knowledge, how one gets this confidential knowledge by the influence of the pure devotees. That's what Prabhupada points out in the purport. Okay. Um, now, that is just one additional point I just wanted to say. Also, um, the Acharya's comment that uh, when he says about the confidential knowledge, also he says that this Narada Muni received um, this uh, Chatush Shloki hmm? and he received from the Bhakti Vedanta, that confidential knowledge. That is just a traditional point that has been mentioned. Okay. Dedicates one's activities in the service of the Lord and mitigate and mitigate miseries, constantly remembering him by remembering his name and qualities. This is the uh, essence of the last few verses. So what he says, ultimately you engage in devotional service. So ultimately I started engaging in devotional service. I constantly chanted the holy names of the Lord. I was always glorifying the Lord. And in that way, I, I became blissful, I became happy. That is the net result that we will see. Okay. Etat samsuchitam brahmams tapatraya chikitsitam yad ishvare bhagavati karma brahmani bhavitam. O Brahmana, Vyasadeva, it is decided by the learned that the best remedial measure for removing all troubles and miseries is to dedicate one's activities to the service of the Supreme Lord Personality of Godhead. So, what is the final conclusion? Engage in pure devotional service. And that happens, we saw so far, that happens by the association of pure devotees. And by the association of pure devotees, more and more we become refined, more and more we become pure and we, from Shraddha, we will be able to elevate ourselves to the level of Prema. So that we, that we have seen so far. So Prabhupada, again in the Parpa, he, he speaks about hearing submissively and... Um, Okay, Prabhupada says that unless one gets the mercy of the Lord, it is not possible for to make any progress. He says, the remedial measure to cure a patient by medical treatment is useless if it is not sanctioned by the Lord. The attempt to cross a river or ocean by a suitable boat will fail, will fail if it is not sanctioned by the Lord. And parents attempt to their children cannot succeed if it is not sanctioned by the Lord. We should know for certain that the Lord is the ultimate sanctioning officer and we must therefore dedicate our attempts to the mercy of the Lord for ultimate success or to get rid of the obstacles on the path of success. Balasya Neha Charanam Pitaram Narasimha Nartasya Chagadam Udanvati Majjato Nau Taptasya Tat Pratividhir Ihanja Seshtas Tavad Vibho Tanubrita Tvadupekshitana This is a nice prayer by Prahlad Maharaj. That's what you can see. Sometimes you can see Prabhupada just puts the translation of the verses and, uh, and it exactly fits in. Okay, this point we saw again, Prabhupada in the Parpati is again reminding the 22nd verse. Yeah, idam hi pumsas. Yeah, tapas, tapasas yava. So he says that whatever propensities you have, be a philosopher, scientist, uh, you are a teacher, you are you are wonderful in art, engage, engage that talent in Krishna's service. That's the whole message of this Parpati. Um, and also Prabhupada makes another practical point for those who are maybe be businessmen, they may be working. Offer the money that you acquired in the service of the Lord. Use it. At least 50% of it use it in Krishna's service. And he reminds the point that Lakshmi is always engaged in the service of Narayan. Okay, now this is a proper highlighting here one point. We can we, we see in this 
words, the word sam suchitam in the stanza is also significant. One should not think for a moment that the realization of Narada was childish imagination only. It is not like that. It is so realized by the expert and erudite scholars. That is the real import of the word sam suchitam. Hmm? Now we can, uh, small boy is saying something, what is this? No, you should not take it like that. Now these are full factual realizations of Narada Muni. And this is acknowledged by all the great scholars. They all appreciate, yes, what Narada Muni says is uh, completely true. Hmm? So that's why we see in the Bhagavatam, sometimes a um, small child will speak. Uh, we see Dhruva's prayers, we see Prahlad Maharaj's prayers. Five-year-old boys, uh, usually five, we don't take seriously when five-year-old five year boys say something. Ah, okay, okay, chalo, chalo. But these are really um, profound instructions. We, If we uh, take it to our heart, then we see transformations happening in our lives. So that's what Prabhupada is stressing here. Okay. Um, oh, good soul, does not a thing apply uh, therapeutically? Cured a disease which was caused by that very same thing. Prabhupada gives a year and year. Narada himself gives an example. And Prabhupada specifically in the purport he says how milk uh, when we have trouble with our stomach, we just you cannot take dairy products, you cannot drink milk. But the same the cure is when the same milk is taken as yogurt, hmm. then our disease is cured, right? So uh, similarly, yes, the actions bind us. But the same actions when we engage in Lord's service, the same action becomes the source, source of yes. liberation or the source of the pathway back home back to God. Yes. So Prabhupada says, when everything is thus employed in the service of the Lord, we can experience that there is nothing except the Supreme Brahman. The Vedic mantra that everything is Brahman is thus realized by us. Mm. So what is our understanding? Sarvo Kalo Vidham Brahman. What is our understanding? Our understanding is that yes, everything is Lord's energy and we will engage everything in Lord's service. So no problem, Vaishnavas have no problem using anything in Krishna's service. Uh, we have the whole principle of Yukta Vairagya, isn't it? Anything we will use, whatever you give we will use. Although you may not be interested for something, okay, if something is there you are giving, the car is there, some any te any advanced technology is there, whatever possible we will use it in Krishna's service. No, there is no problem for us. So Prabhupada also an interesting point he makes here. The best way to make the best use of a bad bargain is to use everything in relation with the supreme spiritual being. That's the thing. For, for facilitating nice service for Krishna, we will use. Huh? That's the point. So we may not hanker for such a thing. If something is available, we'll use it in Krishna's service. Hmm? It's not that that becomes a, a stumbling block for us. Without this facility, that facility, we'll not be able to do service. No. Something is available, okay. We will use it in Krishna's service. And that thing becomes spiritualized. Okay. So now in the next two verses, again he elaborates on this point. See, karma, karma binds us, right? How that karma will relieve us? So Narada Muni still he, he further he explains the same point of dedicating in Krishna's service. Thus, when all a man's activities are dedicated to the service of the Lord, those very activities which cause this perpetual bondage become the destroyer of the tree of work. Okay. Um, the propensity for enjoyment may be turned into the desire for serving the mission of the Lord. In this way, one's activity is changed into Karma Yoga or the way by which one can attain spiritual perfection while engaging in the work for which he has a natural tendency. Doesn't matter. Yat karoshi, yat dashnasi, yat juhoshi dadasi yat. Yat tapasya si kaunte yat. So Krishna says in the Gita, whatever you you whatever you want to offer, whatever you want to activity you, you want to do, do it as an offering unto me, Krishna says. So, so from that, we, the, you may have some pro propensities, you may have some tendency, then you get even you raise yourself to pure devotion from that stage. The, but immediately Krishna connection, immediately you become free from the uh, any kind of bondage in this material world. Okay. Okay, see Prabhupada here, uh, further in the purport, he speaks about the service attitude. The neophyte devotees must render loving service physically and mentally without reservation. This service attitude will induce the great souls to be more favorable in bestowing their mercy, which infuses the neophyte with all the transcendental qualities of the pure devotees. Did you see the secret? This is the secret. If we have proper service attitude, 
then we will be able to further get the mercy of the pure devotees. Gradually one develops into a strong attachment to hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, which makes him able to catch up the constitutional position of the gross and subtle bodies, and beyond them the knowledge of the pure soul and his eternal relationship with the Supreme Soul, the Personality of God. See, again and again this point is repeated. Huh? This service consistently we are seeing in nectar of instruction, this is being stressed. We see in the Bhagavad Gita, again the attitude of Pranipatena, Pariprashnena, that is being stressed. Huh? Nectar of devotion, whole section is speaking about the pure devotion service, how we have to engage in, the, there are all the, the do's and don'ts are explained, isn't it? The, when the 64 angas of Bhakti, there are so many don'ts, there are so many do's. So how to perform, so it's all, it's all, it's a question of attitude also. What, with what attitude you perform a service? So that's what is going to make, help us make progress. So in fact, the entire Vedic scriptures, the whole Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamra, what it is doing, what it is making us, it is actually molding us from being enjoyed of this material world to give pleasure to the Supreme Lord. Hmm? So uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, what is being said? Atendriya Preeti Vancha Tare Bhali Kaam, Krishnendriya Preeti Cha Dhare, dhare Premana. So this is the point. So, by, in, instead of satisfying our senses, we should give satisfaction to the senses of Krishna. So, here in this verse, it is explained, okay, you are you are having inclination on certain things, engage it in Krishna's service. You will be purified, you will be further purified. So, that's what Narada Muni is hinting here. Whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of the Lord is called Bhakti Yoga, a transcendental loving service to the Lord. And what is called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor. So what does it mean? Here he is saying that bhakti is the predominance. Jnana, karma, it's all... Huh? It's, yeah, concomitant factors means it's all the um, side side effects. And you, you will... you will in, in bhakti also, we are performing activities, we are studying, but everything completely focused on in pleasing Krishna. That's the primary activity. That's what Prabhupada is stressing here in this purport. Um, When work is performed, therefore to satisfy the Lord, the performer becomes gradually purified from the material affection. This purification means attainment of spiritual knowledge. Therefore, knowledge is dependent on karma or work done on behalf of the Lord. And already we saw this This particular point is explained um, in the verse. Prabhupada also in, explains about this in the purport. Naishkarmiyam apyachuda bhava varjitam. The conclusion is that a devotee engaged in unalloyed service of the Lord, specifically in hearing and chanting of his transcendental glories become simultaneously spiritually enlightened by his divine grace by the divine grace as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. So, Shravanam and Kirtanam is the central pivot. Without proper Shravanam there cannot be proper Kirtanam and if the Kirtanam is not proper, there cannot be Smaranam. So, we have to understand this science. Okay, now Narada Muni is uh, further uh, explaining Kurvana Yatra Karmani Bhagavat Chikshaya Sakrat Chikshaya Sakrat Grinanti Gunanamani Krishna Syanu Smaranti Cha. Very clearly he is saying. So Anusmaranti, constantly remember what? About whom? Krishna Sya Namani Guna. Huh? His name, form, glories, he constantly remember and engage in his service. Huh? Very clearly he is explaining that. And Prabhupada in the purport is establishing how Krishna is a person to whom we have to really dedicate our life and glorify him. And uh, Prabhupada in the, uh, is explaining, so easy way of doing it, how to do that? This Lord Chaitanya himself, Krishna himself came as Lord Chaitanya and he has given the easiest process of engaging in his devotional service by chanting his names, congregationally chanting his names, by glorifying him. And Prabhupada also gives another practical uh, practical uh, tips in the, he's saying that this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's process is so glorious. Why it is glorious? Kevala Ananda Kanda. Parama Karuna Pahudui Jana Nitai Gaura Chandra. Sabai Avatar Sharo Shiromani Kevala Ananda Kanda. Who will not say no? Prabhupada is saying. Very nice lecture, wonderful Kirtan and then refreshments. <laughs> Prabhupada is lazy. Refreshments. You know, nice Prasadam. Sanctuous Krishna Prasadam. Nobody will say no. Hmm? They will be captivated obviously. Hmm? And uh, Everything is equally potent. Huh? Krishna Nam, Krishna Kata, Krishna Prasad. So one is completely captivated. 
So Prabhupada says that this works, this simple and uh, powerful process, it works. Okay. Mm. Okay, now, now again, um, Narada Muni is sharing what did what he did actually what he got from the bhakti vedantas he got the mantra and they engaged him in chanting the vedic mantra let us all chant the glories of vasudeva along with this plenary expansions pradyumna aniruddha and sankarshana so um, in this um, narada muni himself is setting example so vyasa was eager so what did you chant what what were you you do you doing so he is sharing so this is what i did i was ultimately chanting the names of the lord from because by chanting the names of the lord I was purified, more and more I was purified, so that's the point. Um, so please read the purports, I'm not getting into the details of it. And uh, this is the main point that's being said. And thus he is the actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound representation, the supreme person of God and Vishnu who has no material form. Now here in this verse, uh, very clearly it is being stressed that mantra murtim, mantra murtim amu amurtikam. So the Lord, it's not that the Lord does not have a form. He is a he, is, he has a wonderful form, and we meditate on him by chanting his names. Huh? The, the, we we all know huh? that the abhinato nama namino. There is no difference between the Lord's name and then his form. So um, so we uh, that uh, that was already discussed. That um, okay. Let us see this particular portion of the prophet. Prophet says. The transcendental form of eternal bliss and knowledge can be experienced by our original spiritual senses which can be revived by chanting of the holy mantras or transcendental sound representation. Such sound should be received from the transparent agency of the bona fide spiritual master and the chanting may be practiced by the direction of the spiritual master. That will gradually lead us nearer to the Lord. This is the point. So, uh, Sampradaya Vihinas Ne Mantras Te Nishpana So, the mantra, we are receiving it in Parampara. Huh? You may read the mantra here and there, or you may, you, I will, it will not work, it will not have its effect unless we get it in parampara. So Prabhupada is stressing the point here. And Narada Muni received it from the Bhakti Vedantas and then he shared it to, his, to Vyasade, what he was doing. Okay. Now Narada Muni is saying, O Brahmana, thus by the Supreme Lord Krishna, I was endowed first with the transcendental knowledge of the Lord as inculcated in the confidential parts of the Vedas then with the spiritual opulences and then with his intimate loving service. Okay, so uh, so uh, after I heard all these things and I, I made tremendous progress and I was able to, uh, um, I, I got an opportunity to engage in service of the Lord. That's what he says. Then, um, okay, I, as I, as I uh, shared before, Prabhupada, he explains this in the purport. He says at the end, you uh, see, um, Narada, although he got so many siddhis, all power, but that was not the interest of the pure devotee. He doesn't want to uh, do all these magics and then he doesn't want to show all these powers. Uh, but what is it that he was more concerned? He was more concerned in um, glorifying the Lord. Hmm? So here, Prabhupada, in the purport, he, he completes, he says, the intelligent persons can understand that then Vyasa, Pray to Narada, please teach me this mantra and then learn the same mantra. <laughs> so Vyasadev, you know, he was very curious. Whatever his guru did, he wants to follow. So he's asking, please reveal. So Narada revealed. So, uh, so he finally concludes, please therefore describe the Almighty Lord's activities which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the Vedas. And for that will satisfy the hankerings of great learned men and at the same time mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, there is no other way to get out of such miseries. Now, this is the point. Um, Narada Muni, after having explained all these things, he says, I am, see, I am, I am just completely peaceful, blissful. I am very happy. And uh, I, I know what you, are, what you are undergoing. I have, I have gone through all the stages and now I am totally in blissful stage by the mercy of the few devotees. I am now, in a, you are seeing me in this stage because of, all these things that happened in my life. He shared that. And then he says, so now, now you start glorifying the Bhagavatam. Put, you, you are intelligent, you are, you are, uh, you are actually avatar of the Lord, you know everything, now you compile. So this is what the inspiration Narada Muni, he, he gives. Prabhupada says, Sri Narada Muni from practical experience definitely asserts that the prime solution of all problems of material work 
is to broadcast very widely the transcendental glories of the supreme law. So, see here, again, what is the prime solution? Prime solution is giving Krishna consciousness to others, the pure message. So, he says, distribute this Bhagavatam. Compile and let the common people, everyone let them get benefited. Hmm? So, Prabhupada, the purpose, he speaks about uh, Dushkritis and Sukritis. And everyone needs this message he gives. And the Prabhupada further, he says, Sri Naraji advised Vasudeva to describe the glories of the Lord just to do good to all eight classes of men, both good and bad. Srimad Bhagavatam is therefore not meant for any particular class of men or sect. It is for the sincere soul who actually wants his own welfare and peace of mind. So that's why when we go out distributing books, we don't discriminate. Oh, we will not go to this house. They are, you know, they belong to this caste. They belong to this sect. We don't discriminate. We just approach. We just see everyone as spirit soul, huh? the platform of soul. Of course, a devotee may be given in a time situation and everything, he may be able to even discriminate when to do, what to do. But generally, he doesn't have this conception. Oh, he belongs to this faith. He belongs to that faith. He just just gives to me. Lavishly distributes the message to everyone. Okay? So, we will uh, begin chapter 6. Um, so, those, if you have some questions on chapter 5, we will take it up at the end. Um, Okay, now uh, the uh, this chapter is entitled Conversation between Narada and Vyasadeva. So after uh, having heard from Vyasa, uh, from Narada Muni about how uh, Narada became uh, completely purified and how by the association of the Bhakti Vedantas, he was uh, uh, his life was completely transformed. That made Vyasa more curious. He wanted to know. What happened further? Hmm? So, the first four verses deal with that. Vyasa's inquiries, how Narada spent his time after leaving the Bhakti Vedantas. How did he attain the current body? And how he could remember the previous life? Hmm? Usually, we don't remember our previous life. For most of us, it's a blessing. We don't know what we did. Maybe two of us sitting next to us. One may be father-in-law, another may be <laughs> son-in-law. Uh, we had a big fight in the previous life, but usually the previous life we don't remember. But so you, uh, Vyasa was curious how how were you able to remember it? So all those things we are dealing in this uh, first four verses. O Brahmanas, thus hearing all about Sri Narada's birth and activities, Vyasa Deva, the incarnation of God and son of Satyavati, inquired as follows. What did you do after the departure of the great sages who had instructed you in scientific transcendental knowledge before the beginning of your present birth? So Prabhupada, in the purport, why he was so curious to know about what, what happened to Narada afterwards, Prabhupada says that um, he wanted to follow in Narada's footsteps in order to attain to perfect stage of life. This desire to inquire from the spiritual master is an essential factor to the progressive path. This process is technically known as Sadharma Pricha. So, it is on the side of the disciple, we have to ask questions in a submissive way. Taking association of devotees means uh, serving them and questioning them in a submissive way, proper spirit. Huh? Atato Brahma Jignasa means what? So therefore inquire. So that inquiry we can make with the sadhu, pure uh, devotees. Okay. O oh, son of Brahma, how did you pass your life after initiation and how did you attain this body having quit your old one in due course? Again a question. Uh, And we can also see again from very from very first chapter, whenever the questions are raised, the questions are always asked by, we may say, Vyasadeva was very curious to know about it. And also the question, the result of the question, what is the result of such a, any inquiry from, from a devotee? What is the result of it? Anybody can you think about it? What happens when a devotee asks questions to, to, the, to another devotee or to a spiritual master? What is the impact of it? Loka Mangala, so you are very close, so what does it mean? Krishna Krishna huh? Krishna yeah, build on that, Loka Mangala means Jain what? Atma Atma what does, what does it mean? So Loka Mangala, okay, it's very close. Look, they are always thinking about the welfare of others. 
because they may know the solution, but they are always thinking, oh, this he may speak more on it, he will elaborate on it, he will churn on it. This, in this way, everyone will get benefited. All this, this is the primary focus of an advanced devotee. Always thinking about the welfare of others. Hmm? So that's the point. Okay. Consciousness of the material body means spiritual consciousness expressed through the medium of a material body. This consciousness is inferior, destructible and perverted. But super consciousness of the supra mind, of the supra mind on the spiritual plane is as good as the spirit soul and is never annihilated. It's a simple point. The point that being made here is that when you are in material body, if you are trying to satisfy your senses, you are going to exhibit material consciousness. But in, when, when you are situated on the platform of the soul, when you have made sufficient progress, you will be on the spiritual platform. On, when you are on the spiritual platform, all these things can happen. You will be able to remember the past life. You will be able to, whatever is required for the service of the Lord, you will be endowed with various qualities, various capacities. All those things will happen. Okay. Now, for this, for this question which is raised here as uh, by Vyasa Dev, the rest of the chapter gives the answers actually. The rest of the chapter elaborates the answers. Hmm? And what, what we have done is we have further divided the sections of the verses, lot of divisions we have made, so you will observe as the verse flows. Okay. So Narada under mother's care and he took her sudden death as special mercy of the Lord and left home. So that's what we will see. Um, Naradji was impregnated with spiritual knowledge by the grace of the great sages. There was a tangible change in his life. Although he was only a boy of five years. So, so we have to look at these word, lines proper is making. There should be, if you have taken initiation, if you have ta taken shelter of a guru, there will be a tangible change in the life. Tangible change means what? Significant change. You don't see him with the French beard. You don't see him with tattoos. You don't see him drinking coffee tea. These are all gross things. And then you can see, visibly you can see how he was before. He was very lusty, he was very greedy, he was very angry. Now we can see that because of the practice of, of the um, principles of spiritual life, purification has happened in the life of a devotee. And we can see. So definitely how our life was before and how our life is now. Isn't it? We may not have been so much purified, but definitely on a gross level, we, have, we, have, we don't eat meat, we don't, eat, we don't drink, we don't associate, uh, we don't have an illicit relationship. We don't end, indulge in gambling and all many other subtle habits of anger, greed, lust definitely has reduced that we can see by the association of devotees. So this is what Prabhupada is trying to make a point here that it is an important symptom visible after initiation by the bond of a spiritual master. Actual association of devotees brings about a quick change in life for spiritual realization. So much we can speak about that but we will continue. I was the only son of my mother who was not only a simple woman but a maid servant as well. Since I was her only offspring, she had no other alternative for protection. She bound me with a tie of affection. So naturally, one son and mother, he had so much affection for her and she was taking care of him. She wanted to look after my maintenance properly but because she was not independent, she was not able to do anything for me. The world is under the full control of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, everyone is like a wooden doll in the hands of a puppet master. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. We are all completely controlled. We may say, I'm a free thinker. I want to be a free thinker. I just don't know. You, what is your free thinking? In half an hour, you, know, you have to change your thinking and then go and then you know, clear your stomach or you have to pass water. You know, all your free thinking is gone. You may say, I have controlled everything. We can't control. We are under the control of the laws of nature. Hmm? Now, nowadays, this concept of free thinking is very popular. Free thinking means I don't want to follow anyone's thoughts. I don't want to, if you say something, I will not follow that. If religion says something, I don't want to follow it. Don't put me into your box. I'm a free bird. But in reality, that's not the, that's not reality. That's the point we are trying to say. You, you, you cannot be free. You know, you are bound by thoughts. You are bound by space. You are bound by time. Right? Is it not reasonable to understand this way that we are forced so, Prabhupada many times he, is, he was hitting on this point that we are controlled and we are not the controller. Okay. So, he, he shares that I was 
I was uh, I lived in a Brahmana school and uh, mother was very affectionate. And what happened? One day, what happened? Once upon a time, my poor mother, when going out one night to milk a cow, was bitten on the leg by a serpent, influenced by the supreme time. Now watch out. That is a way of dragging a sincere soul nearer to God. The poor boy was being looked after only by his affectionate mother. And yet the mother was taken from the world by the supreme will in order to put him completely at the mercy of the Lord. How can this happen? If Lord really is there, how can he allow this? Hmm? It's unacceptable. <laughs> After having done so much service, my only mother, uh, he took away. Does the Lord exist? <laughs> perfect questions. All perfect answers are there here. Now you see. <laughs> but Narada didn't question like this. I'll see what was Narada's response. I took this as a special mercy of the Lord, who always desires benediction for his devotees. And so thinking, I started for the north. Nice words are used here. Tadatad aham ishasya bhaktanam sam abhipsataha anugraham manyamanaha pratishtam dishamuttaram. I started moving towards God, understanding the situation to be the mercy of the Lord. This is another important aspect of the Srimad Bhagavatam. We again and again we hear. Whenever reversal happens in one's life, we take it as the mercy of the Lord. We should learn to take it as the mercy of the Lord. We don't complain about the laws of nature. We don't complain about the Lord's plan. Real intelligence is to accept it as the Lord's plan. The Lord knows better than us. Who knows about us better? You may say, I know about myself. Even more than ourselves, the Lord knows about us. Rishika Isha, he is a master of all the senses. He knows about us and our Spiritual master knows more, much more than ourselves what is good for us, being the direct representative of the Supreme Lord. So this is the whole point. And we can see Prabhupada in the Purport, he, make, he explains, confidential devotees of the Lord see in every step a benedictory direction of the Lord. What is considered to be an odd or difficult moment in the mundane sense is accepted as special mercy of the Lord. In fact, we, we get the Sutra from the Bhagavatam. Huh? Tattenu kampam susumikshamanu bunjana evatma evatma kritam vipakam evatma it's all my own mess whatever has happened to me I'm not, don't blame anybody so I, I I evatma bunjana huh? I messed it I have to eat what I have done in fact I have suffered I should have suffered more but bunjana evatma kritam vipakam ridvag vapurbhir vidadan namaste but with my body mind and words whatever may be my situation I will engage in the Transcendental service of the Lord. And Brahma says, for such a person, Ridvag Vapurbir Vidana Namaste, Jivesa Yo Mukti Padesa Dayaba. For such a person, devotional service is birthright, he says. So that should be the attitude. And that and we will see consistently in the Bhagavatam uh, of great personalities, pure devotees, again and again they remind this attitude. And we need to hear this again and again. No? Any small thing, any small disturbance that happens in our life, we immediately start blaming, we become morose. We, uh, rather, when we see the pure devotees, they take it as a great uh, opportunity to come close to the Lord. Oh, again, mercy is flowing. Let's submit ourselves. Easy to say, <laughs> difficult to follow, but that's what we have to learn from uh, studying Bhagavatam and any Prabhupada books. In fact, the whole bhakti process is like this. Then we are always blissful. Okay. Um, so Prabhupada further he says mundane prosperity is a kind of material fever and by the grace of the Lord the temperature of this material fever is gradually diminished and spiritual health is obtained step by step mundane people misunderstand it that's why you can say whenever some people come to Sadhu they uh, Swamiji please give me blessings huh? I, I, my son is going to write the 12th standard exam <laughs> um, you know we have just got a new house um, I mean, uh, then sometimes some people come to me Maharaj and they explain that you know his job is he's not salary there is no salary hike we are suffering these are all the kind of inquiries they come and then they pose with Sadhu and Sadhu he just he just looks at it you know he just says oh they need a lot of purification they need to know what's the real essence of life because these things are not going to give you happiness okay so that but now we see how Narada Muni responded to it he took it as a great opportunity of the Lord to come closer to him. 
Narada passed alone through various places and fearful forests and began to meditate and saw the super soul. Now we see what Narada Muni does. After this incident, he started moving towards north. Now let's hear. After my departure, I passed through many flourishing metropolises, towns, villages, animal farms, mines, agricultural lands, valleys, flower gardens, nursery gardens and natural forests. It's a brilliant purpose by Prabhupada. I just, one section I'll just read. You see what Prabhupada is addressing. After many hundreds of millions of years, one creation is started by the law of nature. And the history of the universe repeats itself practically in the same way. The mundane wranglers waste time with archaeological excavations without searching into the vital necessities of life. Now, you see, here we see there are it's, it's explanations given about nice gardens are there, natural forests are there, waterfalls are there. Everything, every time there is a creation, all the arrangements are one very nicely made by the Lord. So whatever is basic requirements we need to make progress in life, it is provided by the Lord. So the real intelligence is not to study uh, about uh, different frogs, the, the mating of cockroaches in Amazon forests and then do deep research and then write volumes and volumes of books and then publish in Amazon and it's uh, so much sales are happening. Scientists are doing so many things. And what, further what they do, they try to um, Guru Maharaj was explaining his oldest Bhakti Vikas Swami in one class that um, they do the archaeologists, you know, so many people they try to try to dig, dig and then try to find the bones and they try to um, do the dating and try to find out and do so much time and uh, time they spend uselessly in trying to do so much research. What is the what is it that we really need to search for that they are not doing it? And then he said that, well, we will also say, Maharaj is explaining, we can say what is going to happen. Well, you are also going to die one day and your bones also will be buried like that. Huh? This is what is going to happen. Don't waste your human form of life in unnecessary endeavors. Prabhupada is making a point here. The mundane wranglers waste time with archaeological excavations without searching into the vital necessities of life. After getting an impetus in spiritual life, Sri Narada Muni, even though a mere child, did not waste time for a single moment with economic development. Hmm? Although he passed towns and villages, mines and industries. Oh, let's, you know, this village, it requires this, let's give, provide internet facility, let us educate all the villagers and spoil them. <laughs> That's what is happening in modern India, right? What is in India, everyone is being educated, everyone is know how to, um, how to, operate smartphones, how to use the computers, how to um, um, book tickets online and how to simply waste time watching useless things on the YouTube and wasting human form of life. This is what is happening. And Prabhupada says that you know, uh, a devotee is not interested in wasting time on such things. Okay. And what else is happening? I pass through hills and mountains full of reservoirs of various minerals like gold, silver and copper and through tracts of land with reservoirs of water filled with beautiful lotus flowers fit for the denizens of heaven and decorated with bewildered bees and singing birds. 13. Okay. I then passed alone through many forests of rushes, bamboo, uh, reeds, sharp grass, weeds and caves which were very difficult to go through alone. We need help to pass water in the night. Uh, I mean, it is very dark. <laughs> I visited deep, dark and dangerously fearful forests, which were the play yards of snakes, owls and jackals. Okay. Now, see why, Pra why Prabhupada is speaking. See, a devotee becomes fearless and uh, what is the situation? Let's see. Duty of a sannyasi, Prabhupada very particularly points out in the part part. It is the duty of a mendicant, Parivrajaka Acharya, to experience all varieties of God's creation by traveling alone through all forests, hills, towns, villages, etc. to gain faith in God and strength of mind as well as to enlighten the inhabitants with the message of God. Did you see? What is the motive of a sannyasi? His aim is to give the message of the Lord and also simultaneously what is experiencing? Dependency on the Lord. So Brahmachari life is also like this, you know, it's a training that we get in Brahmachari life. Dependency on the Lord, you know, we don't, that's why we don't accumulate, we don't plan so much. We accumulate, you know, I will have 10 sets of dress, I will have two baggages, I will have this, I am going to go there, now I will, you know, I have one big medical kit, 
which will be one box mm, and what will i eat let me have little puff rice let me have this let me have so much packing and in you know, one big box one we don't do that we depend on nature Uh, depend on nature uh, well we have discussed about these things a lot before at the same time we are we we, we are another vision we we go to another ex- extreme extent then we will not carry anything and we will be a big burden for the place where we go and then stay or where whom so is hosting us and that's another extreme but that's out of context the main point that we are trying to understand is this why we are practicing like this what is it that we are gaining we dep- develop dependency on the lord hmm? so when we were traveling in padayatra years back fortunately i got experience to uh, some experience no uh, really it's it's good for brahmacharis time to time go on traveling sankirtan and uh, just depend on what the lord is offering sometimes we will be getting a good accommodation <laughs> under some some nice mandapam we will get we will be able to stay and some days it will be like boot bangla <laughs> you will hardly get a place to stay and then you know so you will be under some tree you will be under only two rooms will be there one day the arrangement is like this another day the arrangement is in a different way so you uh, so we get trained we don't you know or we we get trained to depend on the lord so that's a good training for brahmacharis and specifically sanyasi has got so much faith that the lord will provide lord will do. so two angas of sharnagati are there no uh, one is rakshishitithi viswasho gopritve varnam the lord is a maintainer and he is a protector the devotee is fully convinced with this this is an anga of sharanagati so that we see proper is pointing to that um so lord chaitanya himself set example by taking sanyas and then he travel so proper often used to quote this bhagavatam verse um although there are two things which are there one is um in kali yuga sanyasa is condemned isn't it uh, there is a quote from brahma vaivarta purana which is also quoted in in um, chaitanya charitamrita specifically when chand kasi when uh, lord chaitanya had conversation with chand kasi he was uh, against the slaughtering of the cows so at the time this verse was quoted uh, that verse is, is shown ashvade ashvavedam gavalambam hmm? so that verse is uh, referring but at the same time why then chaitanya mahapur took sanyas Uh, specifically even now in india sanyas sanyasis are respected people know sanyasi means he is self controlled he is he is a he is a sadhu he is a servant of god and there is a tendency to hear in west they may not know who is sanyasi or brahmachari or for them they may, not, they may not know that but in india still the culture is there well thanks to the media thanks to the sports thanks to the modern uh, newspapers and everything it is completely killing this culture nowadays nobody gives a fig for any other sadhu or whatever and also sadhus are also like that isn't it so many nonsense in the name of in the dress of a sadhu is happening people are gradually uh, losing respect but still cultured people still people who are following the tradition they do respect these sadhus so here propad is emphasizing what should be the attitude of the sanyasi how he should how he should mold his life how he should uh, uh, follow what should be the what are the principles so this verse is a famous verse from the bhagavatam 10th canto etam sa astaya paratmanishtam adhyasitam purvatamair maharshibih aham tarishyami durantaparam tamo mukundangri nishe nisheva yaiva i shall cross over the insurmountable ocean of nescience by being firmly fixed in the service of the lotus feet of krishna this is a determination of a sanyasi This was approved by the previous acharyas who were fixed in firm devotion to the Lord Paramatma the supreme personality of God. So that's the thing. So uh, Shri La Prabhupada uh, he himself was very bold we can see he traveled alone to to the uh, to on the Jaladuta survived heart attack and he himself set example that for the pressure of the spiritual master he was ready to take any kind of risks. and we can see those those many devotees they took risks in preaching and those devotees are completely experiencing so much bliss huh? so many devotees uh, in our hari krishna movement uh, in the early days before trying to start a center they were sent to the sent to uk they were in england they went to many new places to start centers they were all struggling so much they were depending on krishna they were not um, 
గురు కృప ప్రభు వాజ్ గివింగ్ క్లాస్ ఇన్ బృందావన్ హీ వాజ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయినింగ్ దట్ యూ నో సమ్టైమ్స్ దే వర్ యూ నో దే హ్యావ్ టు గో టు ది కాన్సులేట్ ఫర్ ది ఫర్ గెటింగ్ ద వీజా అండ్ యూ నో ఇట్ వాస్ వెరీ ఎర్లీ డేస్ దర్ వాస్ నాట్ బిఫోర్ ద కృష్ణ బాలరా మందిర్ వాజ్ కన్స్ట్రక్టెడ్ దర్ వాస్ నో ఫెసిలిటీ నథింగ్ వాజ్ ఈవెన్ ఇట్ వాస్ వెరీ కోల్డ్ దే విల్ నాట్ బి ఈవెన్ ఏబుల్ టు కవర్ దెమ్ సెల్స్ విత్ ఊల్ అండ్ బ్లాంకెట్ దే డింట్ హ్యావ్ ఫెసిలిటీ దే వర్ ఆల్ స్ట్రగ్లింగ్ సో ఈ సైడ్ దర్ సమ్టైమ్స్ దే వెన్ టు ద వీజా సమ్టైమ్స్ దే డింట్ హ్యావ్ ఎనీ ఫుడ్ ఈ ఈ కార్న్ ఫ్లోర్ యూ నో కార్న్ ఫ్లోర్ సమ్టైమ్స్ దే మిక్స్డ్ విత్ వాటర్ అండ్ ఈ వాజ్ వెయిటింగ్ ఫర్ 2 3 అవర్స్ ఇన్ ద కాన్సులేట్ టు గెట్ ద వీజా వాట్ ఎవర్ ప్రాసెసింగ్ so they all struggled so much they did so much hard work you remember when we just hear shyamasundar prabhu's memories we all watched you know how in the beginning days there were hardly any facility they did not even money to pay the uh, the rent for the house where they were staying so one day they saw krishna coming in the form of dollar bills <laughs> the wind was still blowing and they saw dollars coming in front of them they just collected it it's a krishna 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 is there and they had tears so much dependence very devotees the early day they started so they they started taking risk for preaching this krishna consciousness movement that's also um, uh, great experience and uh, and then we will see we are sheltered we will see this how krishna is reciprocating those who are sincerely following me instructions of spiritual master they one also becomes empowered to uh, perform various services one time there is in regarding to the sanyas one time um, trivikram maharaj he was in uh, japan japan also was very hard preaching at the beginning even now japan sees for years and years it's not so easy just we just uh, i i have learned some 500 shlokas i have read this book that book 10 times we all have to one time go to the west and then experience how it's not in india its preaching is becoming sometimes difficult in the west it's not so easy to distribute a book nobody is going oh here is a sadhu who has come let's put in garland and then you know what is going to give a fig you stand in the street and your people will just go up and down you have to just stand there huh? nobody is going to uh, respect you or something it's it's a, such a hard endeavor to give one book huh? so and trikana maharaj was in japan he was he said i am alone prabhu i need some help prabhu said sanyasi means you know you know he is not alone <laughs> like that but later prabhu did send a devotee to help but the point is um, that's what uh, that's the standard Uh, that one one is ready to do anything for the sake of the mission that's the point okay thus traveling i felt tired both bodily both bodily and mentally and i was both thirsty and hungry so i took a bath in a river lake and also drank water by contacting water i got relief from my exhaustion um okay there are uh, the mendicant therefore does not go to the house of a householder to beg but to enlighten him spiritually proper says the purport so what is the uh, interest of a mendicant sadhu so he goes ah now I, if i go there i get good facility they have good internet connection and also time to time they give sandesh <laughs> they give uh, rabri and also they have good uh, good facilities so nobody can disturb we can uh, get ayurvedic massage and relax ourselves it's too intense uh, in temple the uh, sadhu does not have any such uh, his priority is how to benefit someone else hmm? how to benefit others he goes to some place also in only in that attitude he doesn't see what is the financial background of such and such a person his only interest is to give mercy distribute mercy to others and also you will see in the second canto the mood of a, uh, a devotee is mentioned are there no torn clothes lying on the common road do the trees which exist for maintaining others no longer give arms in charity do the rivers being dried up no longer supply water to the thirsty are the caves of the mountains now closed or above all does the almighty lord not protect the fully surrendered souls why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard earned wealth shukadev goswami you know he, he just bangs <laughs> in the second canto he says that this is the mood of a devotee that you know he, he depends on krishna so uh, that we learn so that's what here narada muni is exhibiting he is having full faith uh, on the lord and of course 
you can say he is a mahabhaguka but he is setting example what should what what should be the mood of a sanyasi okay text 15 after that under the shadow of a banyan tree in an uninhabited forest i began to meditate upon the super soul situated within using my intelligence as i had as i had learned from liberated souls so uh, prabhupad here gives a warning how one should meditate meditation is not done whimsically huh? i will meditate on some something weird some mantra i got something huh? there are there is one uh, transcendental meditation uh, i will not name uh, they have some different mantras you know, meaning i i one person actually told me that i was once i once i asked him what are you meditating on he said that i can't say it's a, it's a secret mantra he said but then later i came to know from one person everybody will be given different different things to meditate on so one he was meditating on some table <laughs> i thought i said what is the table that you are meditating on there are many funny things are there so but these are all speculations huh? uh one should know perfectly well from the authoritative sources of scriptures through the transparent medium of a bona fide spiritual master and by proper use of one's trained intelligence for meditating upon the super soul dwelling within every living being this consciousness is firmly developed by a devotee who has rendered loving service unto the lord by carrying out the orders of the spiritual master and we can see um in many um purport Prabhupada is highlighting is specifically highlighting this point that that the meditation should be bona fide meditation. It should be on a form. It should be an authorized mantra. So many places he repeats. Specifically, the section of Druva, uh, Druva's meditation when Druva was following the Ashtanga Yoga process given by Narada Muni, he says this etad bhagavato rupam. Huh? Meditation is uh, done on form of the Lord, not that you just meditate on something weird, something wide. so that is established and another point is stressed here is that we have to follow the bona fide acharya engage in meditation according to the process that he has given otherwise you will you will you will, you will not be successful in your meditation and from bhagavatam itself we have warnings we can take the example of bharat maharaj isn't it bharat maharaj proper in fact he mentions it one one place that because bharat maharaj did not take guidance from a bona fide guru he has to he has to fall down he says so that is that is required and uh, okay and one point I, uh, we can look here in this part part uh, i'll just again read this one should know perfectly well from the authoritative sources of scriptures through the transparent medium of medium of bona fide spiritual master and by proper use of one's trained intelligence proper says trained intelligence for meditating upon the super soul so the intelligence is trained this is also this is a process then by which we uh, purify our senses we train our intelligence to follow a bona fide process so there is no whims here hmm? our uh, our thought process everything we just put on the side we just follow the scientific process that is given by the acharyas so the proper points out that here in this in this purport okay okay another interesting point that uh, just i thought that sometimes um, so we may have our own um, ideas some own strange ideas so that means that we our strange ideas will be based on emotion you know uh, you know we you know what uh, there was one person here he was uh, trying to follow one so called guru um uh, i asked him why you want to follow him no uh, you know it works you know that my, there is one local person here uh, i should sure mention the name uh there is no philosophy there is no authorized uh, scriptures they follow there is no perfect system they follow but someone went and then he satumulated the temple some 25 times and that fellow's heart attack he had an heart attack and some surgery was done he was cured of the heart attack <coughs> so he play he prayed to that such and such a guru and then he became very emotional from that time so the point that we are trying to discuss is our response should not be based on emotions but it should be based on trained intelligence trained intelligence based on what according to scriptures according to guru sadhu shastra okay so otherwise we will end up being um yeah we are end up being sentimentalist exactly that's what is going to happen and sentimentalism you will be completely emotional it's not that in krishna consciousness there is no emotion krishna consciousness is full of emotion but transcendental emotions which arise by following perfect process of this krishna consciousness 
So that happens by taking association of pure devotees. Huh? Chaitanya Charitamrita time and again reminds of us about the association of pure devotees. Krishna Bhakti Janma Mula Hai Sadhu Sangha Krishna Prema Janme Teno Puna Mukya Anga The root cause of devotional service to Lord Krishna is association with advanced devotees. Even when once dormant love for Krishna awakens, association with devotees is still most essential. When in any advanced stage, still you love to associate with devotees. So we have to remember that. We have to be careful about these cheaters, you know. So many people who are claiming themselves to be pure devotees, they just cheat us. Okay. So then, um, now Narada, he continues to, he, he continues to meditate and as a result of his meditation, what happens? He is able to, he is able to, Prabhupada the Parpati explains about how from Shraddha one, one goes to the stage of Prema. So by his meditation, he was completely absorbed in the Lord and there is Ashta Satvika Bhav. He was uh, completely surcharged with transcendental love and he was uh, able to see the Lord in person. Prabhupada points out in the purport, he says, When the mind is surcharged with transcendental love, there comes a strong feeling of separation, which leads to eight different kinds of ecstasies. So what is that? Ashta Satvika Bhav. Huh? Crying, rolling down, um, you know, goosebumps. All those Ashta Satvika Bhavas are mentioned. So tears from the eyes of a devotee are an automatic reaction. And because Sri Narada Muni in his previous birth attained from that stage, very quickly after his departure from home, it was quite possible for him to perceive the actual sense of the Lord when he tangibly experienced by his developed spiritual senses without material tinge. So we saw the examples of um, advanced devotees that you know tears flow for them, flow to them. And Prabhupada many times we see when he was chanting Jai Radha Madhava or when he is explaining some, uh, some pastime or some ecstatic moments, he just stops speaking, tears just flows. So we can understand that they are very advanced devotee, they are completely situated in that, uh, in that particular platform. Huh? And we can also see, I was just you know, mentioning about some of the, when specifically we can see sometimes when some of the Prabhupada disciples whom we can relate, whom we can see in, in our day to day, in our life. We have not seen Prabhupada, there are devotees who saw Prabhupada, who associated with them. And when they share about some of the moments they had with Prabhupada, we can see sometimes when they, they, they are not able to uh, control their emotions. Well, specifically, I was thinking about Shamsundar Prabhu and Sahib and we saw his memory. Sometimes voice is completely choked up. There's so many other devotees also. Voice get choked up and then, you know, in some particular moments he speaks about, you know, just tears, he just bursts. You see how Prabhupada was uh, so merciful, how Prabhupada gave association. And, um, and we can see that these emotions are Coming, these are all true emotions, and while with sustained devotional practice, these emotions um, will will grow. And there are two things. When we read Nectar of Devotion, we also saw we also saw that there is chaya, you know, shadow of emotions. You know, sometimes it appears. You know, we can see we had so many sahajyas who also do heavy kirtan, and then they roll down the street, they cry, and then tears just flow like anything. And after that, they just smoke on bidi <laughs> peacefully. Or they put this panpara, so many things happen. It's a professional act for them, but that will not last and that will not really give satisfaction to the soul. But what Narada Muni is experiencing here is uh, the true bhav it's that we see. Oh Vyasadeva, at that time being exceedingly overpowered by feelings of happiness, every part of my body became separately enlivened. Being absorbed in an ocean of ecstasy, I could see neither myself nor the Lord. <laughs> This is very interesting. So he was completely, he, he lost himself, uh, totally lost himself. That's what Bhagavatam takes us, you know. That's what the teaching is. Right? This is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, that ultimately you become mad for Krishna. Mm -hmm. And this happens. After seeing the Lord, all the senses became fully awakened to render service unto the Lord, because in the liberated state, the senses are fully efficient in serving the Lord. As such, in that transcendental ecstasy, it so happened that the senses became separately enlivened to serve the Lord. This being so, Narada Muni lost of, saw sight of both himself and the Lord simultaneously. So that's what it said. So he, he just saw the Lord and then completely he, he was in bliss. Hmm? Rupam Bhagavato Yattan Manakkantam Shuchapaham Apashyan Sahasotaste Vaiklavya Dhurmana Iva. 
The transcendental form of the Lord, as it is, satisfies the mind's desire and at once erases all material incongruities. Incongruities means all disturbances in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mental frame. Upon losing sight of that form, I suddenly got up being perturbed as is usual when one loses that which is desirable. So he was completely absorbed. He was in, he was in trance and suddenly he lost the vision. That's what happened. So Narada Muni got a glimpse of that most desirable form, but having lost sight of it again, he became perturbed and stood up all of a sudden to search it out. When we desire life after life, what we desire life after life was obtained by Narada Muni and losing sight of him again was certainly a great shock for him. You know, it was definitely a shock. After um, so much endeavor, you know, he was able to see the Lord and suddenly he lost sight. Same thing happened to Dhruva Maharaj also. Dhruva Maharaj was completely absorbed. And you know, whole entire universe was shaking and demigods were in great difficulty. And uh, suddenly at one point of time, he was seeing the Lord. It was like a flash, you know, he lost sight of the Lord. And he, didn't, he, he was completely absorbed and then he opened his eyes and then for him, he saw the Lord <laughs> standing in front of him. But here the situation is a little different. Narada Muni lost completely sight of the Lord. Now, why? What happens then? I decided to see again that transcendental form of the Lord, but despite my attempts to concentrate upon the heart with eagerness to view the form again, I could not see him anymore and thus dissatisfied. I was very much aggrieved. So, yeah, so he was very much pained because he lost the sight of the Lord. Seeing my attempts in that holy place, text 20, the personality of God who is transcendental to all mundane description spoke to me with gravity and pleasing words just to mitigate my grief. So, I only understood the situation of Narada Muni. He has lost the sight of the Lord. So, the Lord um, became pleased and he started speaking. The Lord was much pleased with Narada Muni and therefore the necessary strength was invested in him so that he could hear the Lord. It is not, however, possible for others to perceive directly the touch of the Lord during the probationary stage of regulative devotional service. What is this probationary stage of regulative devotional service? What proper is speaking about? Here? Pro not prohibition. Probationary stage of regulative devotional service. What is that? Beginning stage. Beginning stage, you can say. What is it? Technically, it is called as. Vaidhi sadhana bhakti, no? It was a special gift for Narada. When he heard the pleasing words of the Lord, the feelings of separation were to some extent mitigated. A devotee in love with God feels always the pangs of separation and is therefore always enwrapped in transcendental ecstasy. Huh? So he was feeling intense separation of the Lord, and the Lord now is going to speak. So I will just stop here. Um, we will just hear it tomorrow. Or uh, in the next class, uh, what is it that, um, what is it that um, uh, happened to Narada Muni later? How the Lord was, um, Lord, what directions the Lord gave, what instructions the Lord gave? Okay, so I'll stop it anywhere. Any questions or comments? Um, any other doubts? Okay, meanwhile, also another thing that uh, we need to remember um, that uh, Prabhupada also is stressing about um, taking shelter of a pure devotee. Uh, he is speaking about how the meditation or any process that you follow, you cannot do it whimsically. Simultaneously, we need to be, while we come get to know about who is the uh, bona fide spiritual master and how we have to take shelter of him. Simultaneously, we should also um, we should also be aware of the cheaters, hmm? how cheaters or how in the, they disguise themselves as as real guru. I mean, guru means he's real. Guru means he's bona fide. But they come disguised as some saints and they exploit people. Hmm? They always try to think of how to exploit the energy. The, um, the time, the money. So sometimes that's why you see these bogus uh, teachers are compared to crocodile. If you observe crocodile, <laughs> sometimes it will appear like um, very silent and it is it's just going to do its own work. So those who have observed the crocodile, you will know this. You will be sitting very patiently, silently and so this creature is just sitting. But then you just go nearby, I thought it may, it may remain like silent, but suddenly it will devour you, it will just eat you. So like this only, there are many these bogus sadhus. 
they are just they just you know they talk so many big big things but they use the opportunity and rip you apart this what they will do so we have to be careful so and we get to know about the qualities of the real sadhu by studying bhagavad gita by studying bhagavatam nearing from authorized uh, uh, authorized devotees we will know what are the real qualities not are the what are the fake qualities so with that we should be we should not be sentimental anybody comes in saffron anybody has a big beard anybody has uh, he gives a big talk he just by that he, he cannot be just as a uh, as an as an authorized speaker but what he is speaking whether it is in parampara whether it is in line with what krishna gives that is it the same knowledge and uh, what is the result of those who are following his teachings all those things have to be seen so that is something for us to uh, think about okay anything else any other question any other thing and um, what else i want to share with you okay i'll just mean when since there is some time 3 4 minutes i want to share with you what i have done here it's not mandatory if you want you can take it but we have done i'll just share. so now uh, there is six questions i'll add the six questions also here there we have six questions of the bhagavatam the seventh question we can see here o suta goswami may you please relate the pious message of shrimad bhagavatam as spoken by shri shukadeva goswami um uh, in verses that follow saunaka rishi expands um okay and then we see that question what is being raised uh is further in the fourth chapter it is expanded you can just when you just look at the translations you can you can follow easily when where and why was the bhagavatam recited from where did shukadeva's father krishna dwaipayana vyasa got the inspiration to compile the bhagavatam and then after wandering about the earth like a mad man how was shukadeva goswami recognized as a great sage he actually was when he entered astinapura see in the bracket i have put the verse numbers okay and uh, these are all the questions and we also i just we have marked where the answers are given in the upcoming chapters um, so that is also marked and then in we saw in this chapter fifth chapter the question 8 uh, the nardam is posing that question that um, that he was despondent so that is another question and that split up is also given nardam muni's answers is right there in that particular chapter itself uh, so the answer is summed up here um up to seven you know up to the um, first seven verses it deals with the questions and remaining uh, from the verse 8 to the rest of the chapter it deals with the answers that we we saw all those things how he is explaining about um uh you know what are the do's and don'ts you know nayadvachas chitrapadam are so tadva visargo janata viplo and then he speaks about uh, jugupsitam how this bhagavatam is um, is actually will help the people but you have you have, you have given all the message of dharma artha kama moksha and then he rejected rejected all uh, how this vedic literature some of them is diverting the attention of the people and then he just gives further establishment of how this pure devotion is eternally beneficial in three verses and then he gives instruction what you have to uh, do what you have to exactly compile in the bhagavatam he gives us instructions then further instructions of how uh, by engaging in devotional service uh, by engaging active actions in devotional service one will be purified so all those um, things are summed up and these are the answers for this question of despondency in the fifth chapter so that, so that is also we have summed up here so that you will know okay what are all the questions we have had so far and uh, what are all the answers that is being related in the bhagavatam uh, that you will be able to observe so that's why i just picked up and put some of the things here and also in sixth chapter we will deal with it. there are few more questions that we see in the sixth chapter whatever that we have seen so far uh, that's the 10th question what did you do after the departure of the sages who in your prior birth instructed you how did you pass that life after initiation and how did you attain your present body and how are you able to remember your prior birth which was in previous day of brahma so that's what now we are seeing the answers being related here so far we have seen, we have, we, got, we, have, we have seen the answer after associating with pure devotees and taking initiation from them one should become serious about krishna consciousness when krishna kindly removes one's material entanglements one should devote one's time solely to spiritual development either by fearlessly traveling or visiting a holy place and repeatedly hearing and chanting the holy scriptures 
oh this is another point to remember that not necessary that now we all have to go to different forests so we all can be in different places and there we practice bhakti and we distribute we, we preach this message so that's what practically we do in this modern age and this is what prabhupada wanted and uh, the rest of the answers we will be seeing in the upcoming classes okay so we'll stop here thank you very much shri prabhupada ki jai shri mad bhagavatam ki jai hare krishna